Love you too. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Skylar Collins from Sco Middle School. And this is my poem. When I was three, I would imagine that instead of footprints, I left flowers, beautiful little gardens of daisies and roses because it made me feel like a princess, a beautiful, untouchable fairy with purple plastic dollar store wings and twinkle toes with missing sparkles. The girl that everyone would cheer for. My life motto was, take it with a little bit of sass and a whole lot of class and always hold your pinky up high when drinking from a little porcelain teacup. When I was six, I learned to praise the thunderstorm outside rather than fearing it because it was like art that was painted with a paintbrush. So I put on polka dot rain boots and danced in the storm, stomping in the puddles and running until I would slip and fall, but I didn't care. I knew only the coolest of princesses weren't afraid to get dirty because you're not a king's daughter unless you can successfully slay a dragon. I would try making art of my own, dreaming the impossible, then drawing it too. Crayola was my best friend, and I used my markers as magic wands, drawing my family as royalty, and I was the cute girl with the big crown and puffy pink sleeves on a long silk ball gown, and just like in all the Barbie as a princess movies, I was faced with challenges but overcame them like jumping over hurdles that were the sizes of my own tiny hands, constantly stained in rainbow ink. At eight years young, a nice lady came into our classroom and told us how to properly hold a pencil, even though we all already adapted to writing the way we saw fit. My friend, who was convinced that I was actually of royal descent, told me to hold the pencil the way I was so she could do it too. At that moment, I realized that I was born a leader, the ruler of a monarchy of the highest esteem, and I did it because it was my solemn duty as a princess. <laughs> Then, when I was nine, they suddenly condemned doodling and told us that we needed to start writing. Math became harder, playtime was no longer a thing, and I couldn't paint murals, but instead draw tiny crowns of the margins of my notebooks. And I attempted to take it like royalty, with my head and pinky held high. And then, a little bird told me that I was nine years old, and the princess who slept on a pea simply wasn't cool anymore. My tutus and tiaras were put in a cardboard box labeled, Handle With Care. And out came the tennis shoes and too cool for you tomboy attitude that every young fifth grade girl who just wanted to fit in adopted. Taking this new lifestyle under my wings because it's better to fit in than to stand out. How else are you supposed to win Tetris? I entered junior high not worrying about my education but about my reputation, playing everything off as being sporty and cool, and I even attempted talking to boys. <laughs> When suddenly one day I tried putting on a flowery shirt and pants other than leggings and I felt more confident in myself than I ever had, I realized I was most successful at life when I was myself, a carefree kid with a big imagination, even bigger heart of solid gold. So I sat down and told my three-year-old self with the crooked tooth grin on her face that being something you're not is tiring and you don't want to be deprived of that energy, especially when you're a princess who needs her beauty sleep. <laughs> 